it's Whiskey. Welcome to Palm Tree Elegy. Today, our poem is called Good Timber by Tub Douglas Malick. He was alive from 1877 to 1938. Again, we're in that 100-year cycle. And he was known as the Lumberman's Poet. Uh, and he compares good men to good timber in this famous metaphorical poem. He's from Michigan, and he grew amongst all the lumber camps and lumber yards and logging camps. So he, that was what he was associated with, and he had his first poem published when he was just a kid. So, good timber. Uh, the tree that never had to fight for sun and sky and air and light, but stood out in the open plain and always got its share of rain, never became a forest king, but lived and died a scrubby thing. The man who never had to toil to gain his farm his patch of so to gain and farm his patch of soil, who never had to win his share of sun and sky and light and air, never became a manly man, but lived and died as he began. Good timber does not grow with ease, the stronger wind, the stronger trees, the further sky, the greater length, the more the storm, the more the strength. By sun and cold and rain and snow, in trees and men, good timber grows. Where thickest, lie, where thickest lies the forest growth, we find the patriarchs of both. And they hold counsel with the stars, whose broken branches show the scars of many winds and much of strife. This is the common law of life exactly what it said you know good times don't always create the best people good times and never having strife or having to work or fight for anything doesn't teach us our lessons our lessons are always in the hard times the hard times are what give us our backbone the hard times are what helps us appreciate the good times the dark times is what helps us appreciate the light. If we never have to push and strive for anything, it just doesn't happen. In our society today, well, in our society ever, it's in the human condition that we don't want to see other people struggle and suffer. And when we don't allow them their own space to struggle and to fight their way for, to where they want to go, we enable them to not be as strong as they can be. I'm not saying to let people like just. Uh, there's a limit, right? There, there's a difference between struggling and suffering. Some suffering is a choice. But if there, if there's truly suffering and they are trying, please help. But when we help people that don't necessarily need our help and they can do things on their own and we don't let them. That causes learned helplessness. I saw it in classrooms all the time, all the time. And you can see, we used to have a, a saying when we were teaching is most questions are answered about a student the second the parent walks in the room. And that means that a lot of times, like these kids that just can't struggle and try to learn something and, and, and go through that process to where their brain can assimilate to something. A lot of times it was because the parents will not let that child struggle. That child says, eh, and mom hands, hands them everything. Or that kid starts to stumble and dad hurries up and picks them up. We have to let people fall at least a little bit so that they understand, first of all, the consequences of what the choice they made that caused them to fall in the first place. And second of all, the the knowledge and understanding to know that even if they fall, they can get themselves back up. There's so many people on this planet that have such a hard time getting back up because nobody has allowed them previously to do so. And like a, the poem said, it's the common law of life. Without struggle, there is no strength. It is not wrong to allow people their space to struggle. I've struggled so much in my life and I am by far stronger for it. Those are the gifts in my life. Those things didn't happen to me. Those things happened for me. Those things built me, right? Yeah, the great times are great, but that's not what builds you. 
I, I was a cub master for my kids. There was no Cub Scout pack where we lived and I wanted them to be in Cub Scout. So I actually started the pack and I was a cub master for years. And in the Cub Scout realm, there's a saying that says the worse the storm, the better the stories. Because those are the things that tested us. Those are the things that we had to learn from. Those are the things that we talk about all the time is those 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 gifts, those gifts, those things that we had to fight through and struggle through and get real with ourselves and look at ourselves and realize what we have control of and what we don't have control of. And we just keep pushing forward anyway. That is what makes a good man or woman. And that is what makes good timber. I love y'all. I'll see you on the next one. Keep on rocking. Oh my gosh, such a good video. And I got right to the end, said keep on rocking, hit end, and then remember that I forgot the question. So for the good timber video, the life work question for this week is look back on and reflect on some of those big things in your life that you just really wish didn't happen. And then ask yourself, what gifts came from this? What did I learn from that experience? Flip the script on those things in your life that you wish you could forget. But you don't have to remember the trauma or the bad times. But definitely, absolutely learn to appreciate the lessons that those times those times taught you. Okay, I'm leaving again this time. I swear. We'll see you on the next one.